a senior patient presents with headache but he describes the headache as constantly worsening ever since he first felt it months ago and along with that headache he complains of a decrease in vision blind spots and with that tinnitus he also mentioned that sometimes the headache becomes so severe that he experiences dizziness and vomiting after pulling him through the test when you do a retinoscopy you notice this in front of you is an image of a normal view retinoscope here you can see the retina this here is the optic disc with the blood vessels appearing outside here is your macula and the fovea at the center in this patient however this is the type of image you see on the retinoscope you can see that the area of the optic disc is more bulging and you can see this halo around this this dark colored halo this is basically your optic disc swelling papillary edema as you further do the test in the upcoming months you noticed that it becomes much worse not only is the swelling more worse but even the vessels they start rupturing you can see the breaks here so the patient was then diagnosed with idiopathic intracranial hypertension and this is uh, elevated pressure within the cerebrospinal fluid within the brain which causes all of these symptoms and because this fluid goes through the optic nerve in front of the onto the eye you have these changes appearing on retinoscope but the focus of this lecture would be on the ventricular system which carries the CSF and the objectives are to name the parts of the ventricular system we will be describing the flow and although we just uh, talked about idiopathic intracranial hypertension we'll also look at hydrocephalus on the radiograph now, having that said for treatment of idiopathic intracranial hypertension while we give certain medications like acetazolamide sometimes we can do a procedure known as lumbar puncture if you see in front of you here the patient is lying in front with on his side with his uh, legs flexed upwards so that the back is exposed and stretched here you can see the position of the needle right between the second and first lumbar vertebra although here it's more towards the second and third this is the area where lumbar puncture is done now if you remember the lectures from the spinal cord you will recall that the spinal cord is actually covered with two uh, to three uh, to three layers of dura mater here you can see the spinal cord passing in between and around here is all the dura mater the spinal cord is bathed within the cerebral spinal fluid the purpose of lumbar puncture is to take a sample of that fluid and uh, in cases of uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension not only will the pressure be elevated and you can see that when the fluid comes out but in other diseases like meningitis or encephalitis sometimes the fluid which comes out becomes very milky or cloudy and like that you can diagnose the disease so here is the needle passing through the, between the two vertebrae into the spinal uh, you know it's not into the spinal cord but outside the spinal cord but within the men meningeal layers we're trying to access the subarachnoid space where the CSF is and when it's properly done the fluid comes out and is collected into the canister here is a much better view here you can see how the needle passes pierces the men ninjas but it's not touching the nerves at this point actually these nerves are the quarta equina which taper off from the conus medullaris up above so there's less chance of actually damaging the spinal cord at this level and you can see how the fluid is exiting and here it is being collected so this was your lumbar puncture so let's look at the CSF in general. We're seeing it surrounding the spinal cord. But now let's see how it looks like on a histology slide. This is a slide of the spinal cord. 
and uh, the point when I want to show you is actually in the center but just to orient you you can appreciate the white matter on the outside the gray matter on the inside the posterior horn the anterior horn here is the central canal here you can see the posterior white column where you have your fasciculus uh, gracile fasciculus cuneatus tracts here you have your spinal thalamic tracts and the anterior spinal thalamic you have your anterior cortical spinal tracts here the white matter is just that white matter and if I were to zoom in on this region you can see it's mostly comprised of parenchyma and these neurons which is loading now if we compare this region with the gray matter region you can see there is a difference in the size of the neurons as well as the density here you can see it's much darker and these neurons these are your motor neurons look how large they are and very pyramidal in shape the alpha and gamma motor neurons as compared to these the parenchyma over here mostly you have see here are the tracts these are the tracts let's zoom in even further you can see the tracts are over here this is the appearance of the white matter and compared over here this is your gray matter and here are the pyramidal tracts but the thing that I wanted to show you actually is right over here in the central canal now over here the CSF is passing through this central canal as well as around the spinal cord now if you see over here the lining of the central canal and here it is loading some flat cells here but mostly you can see they are cuboidal and then some become columnar so cuboidal to columnar cells these are your ependymal cells and these are the cells which actually produce the CSF and this CSF is then circulating from top to bottom when we go to the ventricles you'll see that you also have the choroid plexus there the choroid plexus are basically vessels which push through not just the ependymal cells but through the pia matter surrounding the brain which we collectively call the telochoroidea and from those vessels you have the passage of fluids and they all come through into this ventricles and the central canal and as I mentioned it's not just the central canal also the entire uh, spinal cord is surrounded here you can see the meningeal layer covering the spinal cord within this space this is your subarachnoid space let's zoom in over here the space between the meninges and the spinal cord the subarachnoid space pia matter is closely investing the uh, spinal cord so loading actually there we go should load any minute now but you get the idea over here here you can see the meningeal layer and here is the spinal cord so having that said let us now move on to the ventricle themselves in the brain and see the parts and how the CSF flows over there.